so hello everyone welcome back to my channel if you're not familiar with me i am hannah and i make climbing videos here on youtube and this video is going to be a techniques and advice video for intermediate climbers so in a video that i filmed recently i sat in rockover and i filmed a video on some footwork uh, techniques and advice for beginner climbers to help you improve your climbing and in this follow-up video I'm going to be moving into some more intermediate and advanced techniques that you can master to help your movement on the wall and hopefully push your climbing grade. So it goes without saying that I am not a coach or a professional and I'm not the strongest climber in the world but I have been climbing for a really long time and these are techniques that I use every day in my climbing so I thought I would share what works personally for me. All of the techniques that I cover in this video are still worth learning about and practicing if you feel confident to do so, even if you're a newer climber, as long as you're not going to get injured. Because I think understanding how to navigate different terrains and understanding how to move in different ways on the wall is always a useful thing. So, without further ado, let's move into the first and my favourite technique, and that is the heel hook. A heel hook is where you use your heel, but predominantly your hamstring and your calf muscles, and you pull on a hold and they allow you to pull yourself in a direction or hold yourself onto the wall with more force than if you were to just use your toe. So it took me a little while to get my heel hooking technique down, but now that I feel a little bit more comfortable with them, I use them all the time. And the reason that I love heel hooking so much is that a well-placed heel hook effectively allows you a mid-climb rest. I find the trick with a heel hook is the way you point your toes, and this is what it took me a really long time to understand. So you're not just hoping to whack your heel on and hope it sticks, you have to engage the muscles in your legs to apply force through your hamstrings and your calves. To effectively heel hook, you want to pick a good spot on the hold that you're hoping to put your heel on. Pull your heel basically towards your bum, using all the muscles in your leg and keeping really good tension in your core. One of my best tips for using heel hooks is to look for potential applications on volumes so you don't just have to use a heel hook on generic climbing holds. Volumes can be really tricky to navigate but there's usually a lot of surface area or a little nook where they join to the wall where you can make use of a really nice heel hook to make them feel a bit easier. But be mindful that heels can be often so good that they're too good and your foot gets a little bit stuck and if your heel stays stuck and hold that will either limit your movement or risk quite a gnarly injury if you come off the wall and your heel stays in place. That's especially relevant if you're using a heel hook in conjunction with a toe in a heel toe cam, but more on that once we have looked at toe hooking. So toe hooking is a move that can be used to give you reach, but they're also really effective in holding swing. So if you're about to barn door off the wall, which is exactly what it sounds like, you're gonna open out like a barn door, you might wanna whack a little toe in there. Toe hooking, exactly like heel hooking, can be used to take the load off your arms and keep you hooked into the wall. And it's a really great technique for overhang and vertical walls alike. A good toe hook relies on creating opposing force between two points by hooking your toe behind a volume or a hold or an arete. And to do this, you really want to use the rubber on the upper section of your shoe and then apply tension throughout your shin. But tension really needs to be applied throughout your whole body to keep you stable and through your core. The more tension you can create, the stronger that toe hook will be. So I mentioned a heel toe cam, and I'm gonna explain a little bit about what a heel toe cam is if you don't already know. A heel toe cam can be really effective in climbing, but every time I use one myself, or even more, as the other people use them at the gym, I kind of shudder a little bit, and that's because sometimes, like with the heel hook, they can be a little bit too effective. So basically a heel toe cam is a combination of a heel hook and a toe hook in one where you place your heel on a hold and then if there's something to press against with your toe you can cam your toe against it and then lock that foot in position. I'm generally a little bit wary of the heel toe cam um, and I'll generally not try to attempt one if I don't have a good spot or if I'm pretty confident that I can reach the next hold to take the weight off should I need to. So the next climbing move I want to talk about is the bicycle and these always feel really satisfying if you can get or if you find the opportunity to use a bicycle on a boulder problem or a climbing route then it feels really good, you feel very technical, like you kind of know what you're doing even if you don't. And it's a really good technique because it's a really good way to stabilise yourself as you're moving up the wall. And there are two different kinds of bicycle, there's the clamp bicycle where your one foot pushes down and one foot pulls up and then there's the void bicycle in which your top foot is pulling up and your bottom foot is pushing down. 
So before I move on to the next couple of moves, I wanted to have a quick word from the sponsor of today's video, which is Skillshare. So Skillshare is an online learning community where you can go and learn about pretty much anything that you might be interested in, from art to photography, to illustration, to animation, to looking after your houseplants. Skillshare is likely to have a class that you can take to level up your skills. I recently finished illustrating with layer texture and colour in Procreate by Liz Cola Brown, who's an artist, a designer and a teacher, and she taught me how to make this cute little greenhouse illustration, which I'll put up on screen. I found Skillshare to be genuinely such a valuable resource for expanding my creative skill set and for helping me out with these videos. So if you're in the market to learn some new skills, try something new, I would definitely recommend that you take on the free trial. The first 1000 people to click the link in the description of this video will get one month's free trial of Skillshare Premium. So thank you very much for listening to the sponsor and into the next move. So in similar principle to the pushing apart, we have the next technique, which is the knee bar. I don't really often use a knee bar, but if I can ever find one on a route, then I'm really pleased because like I mentioned before, I'm a big fan of the mid climb rest opportunity to kind of like shake out, uh, regroup midway up a climb is always welcome. So I do like a good knee bar if I can find one. Similar to the void bicycle and the heel toe cam, I suppose, a knee bar can be used to lock your body into position on the wall by kind of like using your leg to jam into a space or against two holes. So done well, a knee bar can allow you to completely take your hands off the wall and you can shake out and you can rest but though you do have to still maintain like a decent amount of, of body tension to make sure you don't just fall out with a knee bar you would press down on a foothold with your toes and then push the top of your knee or your thigh into um, either a volume or a hold so obviously the length of your knee kind of determines what spaces you can fit them into but if you can find a good space for your knee to knee bar on a problem then it feels really good the next climbing move I want to talk about is the Gaston. I'm a big fan of the Gaston. I think because I have fairly strong shoulders relative to the rest of my climbing strength, I enjoy getting a good Gaston using a hold in a kind of like sideways motion. So a Gaston is a move where you apply pressure on a hold by gripping it uh, with your palms facing outwards and then applying pressure. So imagine you're trying to open like a broken lift or an elevator if you're in the US doors then you'd be applying pressure in kind of two Gastons. Using a Gaston is basically just a different way of using a climbing hold other than straight on or undercling. It just gives you a little bit more flexibility as to how you position your body. That said, they are a pretty energy draining move. So I quite often try to find my way around using a Gaston, but if there's really no other way up the route, then it is well worth knowing how to Gaston effectively or to use the Gaston grip effectively. So something that a lot of new climbers, the first thing they want to learn is how to dyno because it's the most visually impressive climbing move. So dyno's, dyno is kind of just like catch-all term for a dynamic movement, but generally a dyno usually employed between two uh, far apart holds. If you need to get from hold A to hold B and there's no holds in between, then you will have to dyno. So dynamic moves um, are kind of just require commitment and power and um, hand-eye coordination and a little bit of trust in your shoes. So basically it's just a, a jumping movement a lot of the time. Um, you'll be making a move to kind of more positive holds. Sometimes it can be a little difficult to practice dinos because gyms don't necessarily set them as much as they just set regular routes, but you can quite easily make dinos of your own at your gym by picking two reasonably positive handholds to jump in between as long as you're watching out for other people using the gym then you should be good and you'll kind of learn the movement and learn to trust yourself and learn to make good movement judgments so i generally avoid dynamic climbing or at least i used to a lot more than i do now but um I, anything kind of like run jump catch dynamic in that sense i'll avoid in a set and recently i started making myself confront my fear so something that I always run through with myself in my head whenever I'm about to attempt to dyno is something, some advice that Rachel Carr gave me about how to dyno effectively and that's basically not to think about your arms and latching and just jump, like reaching for the next hold, but to think about it all as one 
movement from your legs to your hips, to your arms, to your hands. So now, whenever I'm about to try a dino, I'll link the video below so that you can watch it. It's been invaluable, I think about it all the time when I'm dinoing. Um, is to bring your hips in as close as you can to the wall before you even think about jumping. But yeah, dinos feel amazing. Um, when you get your first dino, you just feel like a complete champ. So I definitely would recommend practicing dynamic movement, even if it's just between two positive holds um, in your gym. So that is all for my intermediate techniques and moves video. There's easily a second video that I could make as there are many more uh, techniques and moves that you can apply whilst you're climbing, especially as you start progressing through the grades. But I would be here for hours, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!